What an amazing day to be alive. Oh, God is so amazing. He's so good. I love the way he, um, he does. He just comes before us, and he's always with us. He's amazing. And I just, uh, it's hard to move forward sometimes, you know, when you just have that strong sense of his presence and, and his love. Um, today's Valentine's Day. And doesn't he give the best Valentines ever, you know? He just pours out his love in such a way. And, uh, and we get the honor and the opportunity to love him back. And so anyway, I'm so glad everyone's here and it's nice and warm and in this building. We're so thankful. Um, thank you, Robert, so much for the worship this morning. It was incredible. And um, Kim and I were sharing a little bit before service and she was telling me what she was going to say. Uh, for the offering and I said well what do you know because I prayed about what to speak on this morning and, and I said Lord what would you have me share what would you have me speak about and he said trust <laughs> so I love it when he does that you know he just uh, goes what he plans it all out we just have to be obedient and walk in what he's asking of us so I think that's incredible yeah so I wanted to start out with a little funny story and <laughs> I got to share this this morning with Rick and May and, and Jill. Years ago my my husband and my youngest son had gone to the YMCA and they had come home and when they came in the door they were laughing and I said what's so funny and they said you know how trucks they'll have like those banners across the, those like those sticky banners that they put on and how it says get her done he said, well, there were some letters missing, and it said, it or do. <laughs> and so a friend of mine was at the house, and she said, what's so sad is we understand that, you know, <laughs> it or do. And so we laugh, and we, we say that to each other quite a bit. You know, we'll just say, yeah, get her done, and it or do. So I forgot my water. <laughs> so it or do. This is funny too. I was typing this message out last night at home on my computer. I had started it uh, throughout the week. And so anyway, I left the computer, went into the kitchen to prepare dinner. And I come back later and my computer did an update on its own. And I lost everything. <laughs> uh, so I had to laugh about that. I thought that was kind of funny. I was like, okay, here we go again. And so I, I typed it out a second time. <laughs> All right, so trust. What does it mean to trust? Um, over the years, uh, I've had many and many opportunities to discover what trust was and how to walk in that trust with the Lord. Uh, the definition in the dictionary says that trust is a reliance or a dependence, a firm belief in the re reliability, a truth, ability, and to strengthen someone or something. Um, and it's also having relationships that need to be built on trust. Isaiah 30, 15 says, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, the Holy One of Israel says, in repentance and rest is your salvation, in quietness and trust is your strength. And I remember reading that verse for the first time that it really gripped me. You know how that is. You know, you'll read the Bible and you can read it over and over and over again, but there are times that those certain scriptures will just grip your heart. And I remember sitting in the living room and reading this scripture and how the Lord just spoke to me about my striving, my anxiousness, and trying to be able to figure everything out, you know, to make it fit my definition of what life should look like. And um, he just really, once again, highlighted this verse that we can rest, you know, in our salvation. It's not something that we have to strive for. And that we can just have, when we trust him, there's a peace and a quietness that we receive from the Lord like no other. 
So I was going to um, just tell a few stories of how the Lord helped develop trust in me. Uh, years ago, after the Lord had walked me through a great deal of inner healing and deliverance, and I know I've shared this, that story with you guys um, before, but I remember being in the kitchen and just crying out to the Lord. I, I was laying on the floor at like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm crying out, God, where are you? And I, I just felt like a desperation. Um, I wasn't hearing him like I had been. I was, you know, when I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would hear his still small voice so clearly. And then there was a time where I wasn't hearing that anymore, and it really made me question where he was. And I don't know about you guys, but when uh, I feel a distance, I start going through the list. What sin, you know, is there a sin that I've committed? Lord, I repent, you know, I repent for this and that. And just make sure I'm covering all my bases, uh, making sure that I'm in right standing with the Lord. And the Lord was just reassuring me. And um, I remember him speaking to me um, probably a couple weeks after that time and saying, Tammy, how desperate are you? And I remember saying, God, I'm desperate. <laughs> you know, I have to have you. You're my life. You're my life source, and I can't live without you. I'm, I'm desperate for you. And he said, do you believe my word is true? And I said, yes, Lord, I do. And so then he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I said, that's right, Lord, you won't. You won't leave me nor forsake me. And he said, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of another they will not follow. And so he was just reassuring me that even though there was a time where I, I well, it was just a, a misperception, actually, on my part. He was speaking during that time. It was just in a new way. And as he was growing me, I, I needed to understand that. And so that was just a really valuable lesson for me and a place of, of just trusting him in my walk with him. Psalm 23 says that the Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need. He lets me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, and, they prepare, and you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows certainly. Goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life, and my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. And I love that scripture. I mean, it just covers so many areas in our life, you know, that we don't lack anything with him. And he gives us that peace. He gives us that rest. And I love the line that it says, he restores our soul. And that's a big part of this journey that we're on, is just him restoring our souls, getting us to a place of total trust, of dependence upon him, relying upon him. And... Um, so part of that, restoring our soul, is, of course, our minds, our wills, and our emotions. Another time in the kitchen. I, I think it's interesting that he, <laughs> he visits me quite often in the kitchen. And I don't know if you know this or not. Some, they say that the, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And so I you know, was in the kitchen one day, and I heard the Lord say, Tammy, I want to give you more. And to be honest, my first reaction was fear. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, you know, wait a minute. You know, what does that involve? Because I knew how painful it had been to go through the inner healing and the deliverance of just the Lord letting me see my past, you know, through his eyes and walking me through healing and just understanding um, you know, his work in my life. And so, <laughs> like I said, at first, it's like, ah, I don't know about that, Lord. And then I felt like I had enough. You know, I felt like the Lord had blessed me so much that I didn't need more. Um, but he, once again, he's so gentle and he's so kind. And he was just letting me know that um, I could trust him. And he, he brought me back. You know, he brought to my remembrance 
walking me through those times of inner healing and deliverance and how, yes, it was painful at the time, but to come out on the other side of that and the freedom and to be free of guilt and shame and condemnation and to have a relationship with the Lord like I had not had before, it was so worth it. And so it's like, yes, Lord, <laughs> you know, I trust you to submit this area of my life to you. And so it just truly has been incredible to walk with him and to trust him more and more. Um, another funny story is I realized through the help of a friend, aren't you thankful for those friends that speak truth, <laughs> even though they might sting a little. Um, and this friend of mine, uh, she said, you might be dealing with, with a spirit of poverty here because when the kids were little, Clay decided that we needed a, a dependable vehicle to go and buy a minivan <laughs> so we could haul the kids around in and their, their, ch their friends as well. And the price of the van, oh, it was like, oh no, there's no way. Um, Clay was working, you know, he was driving, he's a truck driver. And I just had this fear of not being able to make the payments, of not being able to come up with that much money every month. And um, the Lord just really, it was in my face. You know, once again, I had an issue here with not trusting him for provision and not trusting that he would do the things he says that he'll do. And so after talking with my friend, I realized that, realized that um, I, I did have a poverty mentality. And I know that it went back once again, you know, to my past, my growing up years of growing up in poverty. Um, it was extreme at times when I know as a kid we didn't have running water for a while because our well had been contaminated and we didn't have the money to um, hook up to city water. I remember, this is gross, but a bucket in the garage, <laughs> you know, and that's what you did. And uh, washing dishes, you know, uh, with, with water that we would bring home and, and going to my sister's, my older sister, to, to shower. And uh, one day, this was funny, one day I came home from school and my mom said, um, Tammy, what's in on the kitchen counter? And so I said, I don't know. So I went in the kitchen and curled up on the counter um, in the kitchen was a snake. <laughs> and so I, I said, it's a snake. And she said, well, I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure, you know. <laughs> she didn't go close enough to see. And the house that I grew up in, um, my dad, you know, alcoholic, didn't take care of things. And so we had holes. I mean, I could look in, like in the bathtub especially, I could uh, stand in the bathroom in the bathtub and I could see there wasn't any drywall or tile and I could see outside, you know, from the inside of our, our house and there were holes in the kitchen as well and that snake had crawled in and got up on the, the kitchen counter. And thankfully, we had a wonderful little kitty cat <laughs> that took care of that problem for us and she actually laid it by the front door one day and so we knew that that problem had been taken care of. Oh, too funny. And so I did. I grew up knowing, la you know, knowing lack. I remember one summer not having shoes as if I would have wore them anyway, you know. <laughs> so it really didn't matter. But uh, I remember my mom just, you know, really being concerned that I didn't have shoes. Um, so anyway, I realized that I had to deal with that, that God wasn't lacking anything you know and he is uh, my father and he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he can provide for me so i prayed i asked the lord about going into debt for this minivan and he said yes and trust him <laughs> so i did and we were able to make every payment on time and paid the van off you know after years and so that was a, a really good lesson for me um, there were not there was another time where Clay had had a stroke, and I, I know I shared that story with you guys as well, uh, and we were hit with, we didn't have insurance at the time, and we had, like, I think it was around $13,000 to pay. That was, that's nothing compared to what it would be now, but at that time, it was just really overwhelming, and I remember just feeling overwhelmed and just not knowing how we were going to pay, pay that bill. 
and just praying about it and hearing the Lord say once again, <laughs> trust me. And so I ended up calling the hospital and asking, you know, if I could set up a payment plan with them. And the lady was so kind. And she said, well, let me, let me check on some things. Hold on. And when she came back, she said that they had grant money available and that they were going to write off the entire bill. And they did. Yeah. <laughs> He's so good. So good. Yes. And so I, I'm glad, you know, Kim talked about it earlier when she was talking about finances. You know, the Lord's concerned about absolutely every area in your life, whether it be finances, whether it be relationships, your children, your health, um, just anything. And I just encourage you to take an inventory of your soul and really pay attention to those areas. If there's a particular situation going on in your life, you know, what are your emotions? Are you experiencing some anxiety with that? Are you in a place of, of um, just not sure, you know, what the outcome is going to be? And just surrender those things to the Lord and ask Him to just come in to that situation and to show you that, you know, He can be trusted. You know, whenever I struggle with with trust and just unsure of what's going on and how things are going to work out, I love to remember his goodness. You know, just like these stories that I've shared this morning, those are some of my treasures that I hold on to. And there's so many more. My goodness. I've walked with the Lord for 35 years going on 40 years now, and so I've got many stories, <laughs> and I just love the fact that I can, I can reflect back on how the Lord has walked me through so many difficult situations. Um, I know, you know, having two sons going to the army, and both of them having two tours in Afghanistan, and my oldest son doing another tour in, in Syria, and being just, once again, trusting the Lord with, with my children. And um, my oldest son, Josh, before he went into the army, my husband and I were praying together for him. And, you know, as a mama, being concerned about your kid going off to war was definitely heavy. And so Clay and I were praying, and I saw t Clay begin to, to tear up and to cry. And, and I said, what's going on? And he said, God just gave me a vision of Josh and angels circling him, providing protection for him. And that was just incredible. So it just gave us such peace knowing that God had his hand on, on our son. And when we prayed for Nick, you know, before he went into the army, God gave him the same vision for our son Nicholas. And so I thought that was just, you know, incredible as well. So we need to give God, you know, opportunities to show us that he can be trusted with our lives. And I'm here to tell you that he'll never let you down. He's always faithful. He's always true. He's always there, there for you. Hey, that was a little poem. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> uh, I love Jeremiah 29:11. Let me see. Like I said, things went a little crazy on this computer last night. But uh, most of you can probably quote it. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And I love that. You know, God, he does. He just has good for you. His plan for you is good. You know, in your life circumstances or your situations, it may not seem good at the time. But it, it's always good. And Romans 8, 28, you know, that's another one that we can hang on to tightly is that he works all things together for our good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. This is a quote from Bill Johnson that I love. It says, bold faith stands upon quiet trust. Isn't that good? You know, so that when we trust the Lord and with our our lives, our circumstances, you know, it, we just do, we just have a bold faith that he releases in us. And also just to, to remember that whenever you're going through things, that there's a measure of his presence found in those times of de desperation that you don't get at other times. 
And that's been my experience. And those times when I'm, I'm just so desperate or I'm so wanting to hear his voice, for him to move in my life, is when I feel him the strongest, you know, where he comes in and he's there for me. He's my, my father, our provider. I remember going through a time of um, just, once again, uh, questioning, well, here recently, just with everything that's going on in the world, you know, that's been difficult. But the Lord has just reassured me that we are not of the world. You know, we're in it, but we're not of it. And that we can trust him in all situations. I think of martyrs. You know, I think of the church in China. I think of, you know, different uh, people groups that have had to go through so much persecution. And, and uh, it does help to put things in the proper perspective <laughs> that I have not suffered as they and uh, but I, I'm still once again trusting. So I want to encourage you as well that when you begin to question and ask the Lord about these things, to just know that we have to sometimes be okay with not understanding. We have to be okay with the mystery. Um, the Lord tells us. Um, let me find that scripture as well. Okay, you guys can, well, I can just quote it, I guess. <laughs> I guess I can find the uh, ad, oh, there it is. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so that lets us know that there are going to be times where we don't understand what's going on and we may not be able to um, have the Lord bring us that, that revelation at that time. But we'd have to just once again be in a position of trusting him and knowing that he's going to come through for us. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will also uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, I did a search on trust, the word trust, and how many times it was in the Bible, and fear of fear. Um, just fear of, um, you know, the unknown. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little sidetracked here. My mind, I'm trying to listen to the Lord, trying to read my notes, and trying to speak at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking has not been a, a strong point of mine. But anyway, um, you know, the Lord just wants us to know that he can, you know, we can definitely trust him in all these things. Let me back up a minute and um, just trying to make the point that, you know, there are times that there's not going to be things that are, un, un, um, that they're not going to be revealed to us, that they're going to be unknown, but we can trust the Lord with the revelation to come at, at the right time to know that he's going to hear our cries, that he's going to answer our prayers. And, you know, as Christians, we're really good at seeing what the enemy is doing. We can point out the evil. We can see the plans that he has and, and so on and so forth. And I remember listening to a message one time that talked about that, that as Christians, we can. We can, we can see what's going on as far as the enemy's attacks and, and just the, the situations. But the, the key is to ask the Lord, Lord, what are you doing in this situation? Where are you at? And that really blessed me. I was at uh, visiting some family and was just really grieved with some of the things that I was seeing that were taking place. And I remember, you know, lying in bed that night and just crying out to the Lord about the things that were going on. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I see all these things. You know, I'm lifting up my family to you and I'm asking what are you doing here? What are, what are you doing in this situation? 
and I heard him say, I'm hovering. And that just blessed me so much. And he showed me just how his spirit was there over each one of my, my children, each one of my grandchildren, that he was hovering over them. And I heard him say that he was just waiting for the opportunity for them to cry out to him, to ask of him, and that he was there for them at all times. And so I slept pretty good after that. I was able to just release those things to the Lord and once again, trust him with the situation. John 16, 33 in the New American Standard Bible says, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you, ha you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Isn't that a good one? Yes. You know, my goodness. If, uh, if you put trust in and do a Google search, like I said, I think there's like over 400 scriptures that have to do with, with trusting the Lord. So that's a good little study in itself. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29.29, 29, New American Standard says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our sons forever. So I like that. You know, that just lets us know once again that there are certain things that the Lord doesn't reveal to us. And you know, I'm so thankful that there are times that he does keep things hidden. You know, if we could see everything and know everything, um, I think that might be even more overwhelming than the situations that we have to face sometimes. Hebrews 11.1 now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about the things not seen. And so the Lord wants us to, to put our faith, our hope, our confidence in him. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. That's another good promise to hold on to. I'm going to read one last verse, and that, you know, here I go again. I'm being concise and not wasting any time, am I? That just gives us more time for altar, right? You know, and just to, to meet with the Lord. But I felt very strongly that the Lord wanted me to read this over you. It's such a beautiful verse. Excuse me, I better take another little sip. Because in all of this, trusting in all of this tribulation and the trials that we go go through the bottom line is that the Lord wants us to know him and he wants us to, to just get in touch with who he is and to experience his love for us and so that's what all this is about and so it's like bring it on Lord you know I, I will face those trials I will face the tribulations because I do know that I can trust you in all these things, that you're faithful, you're true, you're good. And um, I just want to encourage you with that this morning. And then I want to read this over you to encourage you once again to just really get to know him and let this verse sink in. I'm going to just say it as a declaration over you, Philippians 3.10, in the classic, uh, amplified classic version. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may so share in his sufferings as to be continually transformed into the spirit, into his likeness, to his death in the hope. Isn't that beautiful? You know that that's what the Lord has for us. He wants us to be intimate with him. And absolutely everything in your life that you're going through will not be wasted. He redeems it all. And he wants us to just understand um, his love and to know him. And for those of you that have children, you know, as a parent, you want good for them at all times. 
they may have to go through some le tough lessons once in a while. They may have to go through some times of discipline, but the ultimate goal is to have them be strong and courageous and to walk in the fullness and all that God has created them to be. And that's what the Lord has for us. He wants us to embrace those times when we're not seeing. He wants us to embrace trusting Him and walking in the fullness of everything that He's paid the price for and to know that we can trust Him every step of the way. And so with that being said, I just want to encourage everyone. We will, uh, we're going to have a time up here at the altar for those of you that maybe need to experience trust in a greater way or any other situation that's going on in your life. I encourage you to come forward. We'll play some ambient music and we will have some um, ministry altar workers available as well for any of you that would like individual prayer. And so the altar call this morning is just to come forward and to get alone with the Lord. Exam let him examine your heart to bring forth uh, any areas that you need freedom in and just to be prepared to meet with him and go deeper. So I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And I would just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you.